Hi, this is Amy Lewis. This is Engineers Unplugged. Hi, this is Amy Lewis from Cisco, and we're here for another episode of Engineers Unplugged. I've got Giles. We're going to whiteboard quietly for him. And Aaron, and we're talking about cloud workloads. This is going to be an awesome episode, so strap in. Here we go. I want some aspirin, is that okay? <laughs> totally comes with a podcast. You viewers at home might need some as well. Here you go, Aaron. All right, what we want to talk about today is cloud computing and this concept of cloud workloads. Giles, you and I, we talk to a lot of customers. We do. And, and what we wanted to do is, is really talk about workloads and some of the co cloud computing concepts before you go into it. So why don't you start with concepts and I'll start drawing a little bit. Okay, so you want me to explain cloud computing to people? Absolutely. Wasn't that, wasn't that like three years ago we were meant to be doing that or something like that? I don't know. Okay, let's go back, go back to the basics and get the four basic principles of cloud computing. So let's start with self-service. We all want some self-service for our users, our customers, whatever it is. We all want rapid elasticity. We want to be able to scale up, scale back very, very quickly. We all want the ability to, uh, to have some sort of charge back or metered use. And what's the fourth one, remind me? That, uh, went, that went with the last drink last night, the fourth one. Did you do metering? Metering, we've done metering. We've uh, done... The other one, the other one, resource pooling. Resource pooling, go. yeah, yeah, we do, we do, we really know what we're talking about, we really do. Okay, so they're the four, four principles. The problem is we've got these days is when we're building private cloud, we want, we've got two different types of workload, okay? You know what a workload is, Aaron, don't you? Yes, I do know what a workload is. Okay, so let's think about how we build our apps on our cloud, okay? So what you're drawing here is what? What I'm drawing here is basically what I would say is a traditional workload, kind of the, the virtualization way of doing things. This is a lot of your older enterprise legacy applications and workloads. And what happens is a lot of people want to cloudify this, okay. right? And, and, and what do you have here? Well, you've got a management server typically residing in the top. You've got some kind of networking, usually like layer two VLAN kind of networking. You've got some some hypervisors here in some kind of clustering configuration, and you have a SAN on the back end talking to the disk, and this is where the data is ultimately residing. So, so what, what, what sort of apps are we talking about here? We're talking about traditional enterprise style applications, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about things that have uh, been around in the enterprise for a long, long time. We're talking about mail servers, we're talking about line of business, traditional client server applications, right? Okay. Here's the important thing, though, okay? How do these applications deal with scale? How do these applications deal with resilience? How do these applications deal with failure? Okay, are you going to tell me about that, Aaron, or have I got to carry on talking with this hangover? <laughs> Go on, please. <laughs> so, so the easiest way to say how do the applications deal with, with failure, they don't. Ah. The, the hardware and the underlying infrastructure, the, the SAN here, this is where your hardware failure resides. The cluster level is where your hardware failure resides. The network is where your hardware failure resides. And so, so hold this, on, hold this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You've, you've forgotten something. There's no hypervisor. Hypervisor as well. Yeah. Hypervisor yeah. as well. So, and so the hypervisor also deals with failure. Yes. Yeah? So the app on top doesn't deal with failure. Yes, and it's this concept of high availability, right? The application really has no idea what's underneath it. It doesn't care. It just assumes it's going to be up all the time. Now. What I've done over here, I've drawn about half of it, we'll, we'll draw the other half here in a second, is this idea of a cloud application or a cloud workload. Now, now, tell us a little bit about how that is different while I draw. How it's different. Right, so these are the sort of applications that have been written, guys have been writing in the last couple of years. These are applications like mobile applications, they're applications for gaming companies, applications that need to scale really quickly, and really importantly, they're applications that have been written for a cloud service. So, you know, one of the great big public cloud services we know, guys have built businesses based on those public cloud services. So they've had to write their apps in a way that allows for the fact they're not going to have all of this stuff going on, okay? So they haven't got an entire enterprise IT department who are spending their days building SANS for them and worrying about failing over and redundant sites and all of that, okay? They've just put their credit card into a public cloud somewhere and they've built a massive, huge, scalable business on it, okay? so. What's going on with these guys in their code? They're the guys who are having to worry about scalability, scaling, failure, fault tolerance, all of that stuff that IT is traditionally worried about is now being worried about by the developers. Okay, traditional workload, cloud era workload. Yes. Everybody got that? Good. 
<laughs> and, and so, let's talk a little bit about how this is different. Okay, the application is written differently, but, but how and why? Well, typically, instead of networking, we're, we're doing software-defined networking. We're not doing hardware-based networking. We, we typically have uh, hardware here that could be commodity hardware. It isn't necessarily um, the fanciest of servers in the world. It could be bare metal. There doesn't even necessarily need to be a hypervisor. And then you've got object storage at the bottom instead of sand storage. Again, designed for replication and, and really not necessarily designed to be high availability because that's done at the application okay, level. I get it, I get it, okay, okay. So what this is about is people building infrastructures that look like public cloud infrastructures. Fundamental point of which is they're cheap, they can scale, all those things we talked about at the beginning, okay, that's what this infrastructure looks like. Get it, okay, so why doesn't everybody start writing their apps like this? And why don't we build infrastructures all like that? Because moving things around is hard, rewriting things is hard. Now, let's talk about management for a second though. We've got two things here. Yes, so we, we, we've got these two workloads. You really need an idea, here, hold on, hold that. We really need the idea of something that will manage all of these. So what do you do? To steal a term from Amazon, consider this an availability zone. This workload, this workload, both of them in an availability zone, and you find a product that actually allows you to manage both the legacy or traditional workloads as well as the cloud era workloads. And with that, okay. I think we're done. No, we're not. We're not. Oh, we're not. Okay, 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 okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The thing we didn't talk about is that these these guys, that's lots and lots and lots of dollars. <laughs> okay, that's that's big, expensive IT yeah. infrastructure. This, I don't know. What's the cent symbol on? I'm from Britain. We 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 have a P in Britain. What's the What's the symbol for a cent? Oh, <laughs> so, I don't know. So, I don't know. I'm from the wrong country. A cent. A cent. Yeah. Okay. So the, these are traditionally cheaper, cheaper in position. Amy's cutting us. Oh no, 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 no. Okay. All right. The cost bit was really important, Amy. <laughs> All right, it is important. Are you finished? Okay. Can I go to bed now? Can I go to bed now? Oh, there's one more thing. And viewers, this is going to be awesome. So uh, are you ready? Sure. Yeah. Let's see. It's unicorn time. But this time, I want to see a hungover unicorn. <laughs> unicorn hangover. Go. Go. Well, hold on, hold on, yeah. hold on. I don't know what I meant to do. Draw a unicorn that's hungover. I don't draw. He draws. Draw. Okay. You have to do it too. I have to draw a unicorn. I can't draw a unicorn. I no, can't what, what, I can't what's a unicorn look like? Ready? All right, so here so we go. something like that. Big uh, horn it's got a big hair. horn and it's got a smiley face. It's got, it's got a nose, something like that. And it's got a body and it's got some legs. It's got, my little girl could do a better unicorn no, than that. Okay, right, no, 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 hold on, hold on. Aaron, just stand there a second. Just stand there. All right, you got that? Okay, there's my unicorn. There's the one my little girl did. There you go, Woo! sorry about that. Um, there you go. The uh, Hungover Unicorn Challenge, a first for Engineers Unplugged. Great information. I really like, um, very clear explanation for our viewers. We get a lot of questions about this, so cloud workloads. Um, great, great having you on, Giles. You want to come back in frame? Well, you got to. I'm going to stand there, am I? Yeah. And uh, thank you, Aaron. Always a pleasure. <laughs> and we'll see you next time on Engineers Extremely Unplugged.